It's, it has stopped, I believe. I don't know why, though. It's crazy. Guess I need to do Facebook Live a lot more. And then I don't, I don't even have the app downloaded, so I only download it when I do like a live. Time is it? Hello, hello, hello. While you're jumping on, I'm gonna wait for a couple, a few people to get on before I get started. Apologies for being a little late. My cousin just told me I had one minute, and I think it was past seven thirty. Hello, hello, hello. So everybody's wanting to know the announcement. The announcement. This is something that. Hi, cu Hi, Aaron. How are you? I was about to say, cuz my cousin's name is Aaron. That's who I thought you were for a moment. Hi, Purity. Hello, hello. So this project, um, just to share a little bit while I'm waiting on some folks to come on, this project is something that I have been working on, and I honestly thought that it was going to go one way, but it didn't, it ended up going another way, and um, that's just how God does things sometimes, you know, and it's just really up to us to lay down our own agenda to see how exactly God's agenda is going to flow for um, the vision and purpose that he places inside of us. So I'm going to announce and share the project, but I'm going to wait maybe about like two or three more minutes. What time is it? 7.40. 7.40. You're going to be my, my time? Okay. That's my friend, y'all. Y'all. Gotta have people who believe in you and support you, y'all. So I'm gonna wait a couple more minutes till some people come on because I have a testimony that I want to share um, that I actually encountered just this past week. Something I was not aware of, and if you do not confront a thing, you will not be able to overcome it. So you have to confront whatever it is that you're battling with and even if you didn't know that it was there once you are aware that's when you have to confront it so that you can overcome it so again i'm just gonna wait just a couple more minutes i'm going to try to do this live video maybe in 15 minutes or maybe about 15 minutes i'm hoping but we'll see um how it goes thank you Brittany, for sharing And, I mean, if you feel like as I'm speaking that someone, hey, Brittany, <laughs> someone can be um, encouraged and, you know, empowered, please do feel free because, you know, that that's what it's about. We have to, we have to be able to help one another. If it, if it wasn't meant for us to empower and help one another, then God would have just put one person on his word by himself, Right? We all have a purpose, and God has a plan for all of our lives. So um, I just really hope that you all are empowered and you are as, as excited as I am about what I have to announce. <laughs> okay. So I have two minutes, two minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going, thank you, thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And so if I have any new followers, um, any new followers, um, I am Evora Bentley, Coach Evora B. Um, God, I know that the assignment over in my life is to help others to be empowered to discover their purpose and to move your life from a place of fear to a place of faith. And the only force that drives out fear is faith. So, and I put polls, I shared uh, a testimony about how five years ago I was in a really, really dark place. I was ready to give up on life and it was a car accident where my two oldest kids had to learn how to walk all over again. Um, 
that at that time I was seeking God and saying, God, do you have a, you know, is there a, a plan? Like what's the purpose and reason for me being here? So during that time, um, I went through that. I didn't get hurt. No scratches or broken bones in that accident. And during that time I was saying, God, I need you to let me know if I have a purpose in life. Cause I feel like I'm ready to check out on life. And it was during that time that God um, made, started making things plain and clear that, yes, you know, I do have a purpose for you. And so I started seeking God and just really um, started at that time to surrender my own plans, my own thoughts of what I wanted um, for my life versus the plan that God has for my life. And um, that's a lot so many of us are afraid. Fear has us in so much capture of the fact that we are afraid to put down our own will, to put down um, our own plans and really allow the power of God to come in our lives. And so um, this project, the, this project, it really talks about fear. Hey, Shaniqua. It really it, it talks about driving fear out with faith because it takes faith faith in trusting God's plan and God's will for your life. It takes faith. But so many people are so afraid because they can't see the plan. They can't see the route. And so this is where it, it takes faith. Trusting in God and a relationship with God. What time is it? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So first I want to share the testimony as far as what happened um, last week. So if anybody know me personally, uh, my mother passed at the age of 43. Uh, I was 18 years old and she passed of breast cancer. And so a couple of months ago, about three months ago, somebody came to me. Well, excuse me. I reached out to somebody about getting some life insurance. And so they came to me. They asked me my history, um, told them the history of my mother uh, passing of breast cancer and it had been like a, a long drawn out process. And so they kept coming back with these questions. And the last thing they came back and they said, um, you know, what was the results of your last mammogram test? And I'm like, what? I haven't had a mammogram. And so they're like, well, they want you to get a mammogram because of the history of your mother. And, you know, throughout years, you know, people have said things to me like, um, well, Ivor, you know, when are you going to get a mammogram? And, you know, people have said things like, aren't you worried and stuff like that, as if they were trying to pretty much determine my life to be the same as, as my mom life. But not saying that they were intentionally doing that, but see, people look at what doctors say, people look at the statistics, but I'm going to tell you, I only listen and believe what God says. And so what I didn't realize is that even though people were saying that and placing their opinions about how my mother passed, I really didn't know that, that I was really taking that in. So I'm like, no, you know, I'm good. So a lady tells me, um, she said, well, you need to go ahead and um, you got to get this mammogram first. So I'm acting crazy, right? <laughs> so I'm just like with this attitude, like, man, this is dumb. Like, why do I got to have this this mammogram? Like, you know, this this doesn't make any sense. Yes, my mother passed, but why, you know, why are y'all trying to compare me? You know, like I was. I was just so baffled by it. I was irritated, to be honest. Every time she called my phone, had something to say, I'm rolling my eyes, just acting all kind of crazy. And so we got to be careful when things like that happen. And you need to ask yourself, why am I fighting this? And that's what I was doing. I was fighting the fact that they wanted me to have this mammogram. And these thoughts and everything just pretty much was circling around to the fact that my mother had passed and how my mother passed. And I didn't know it was pushing up some stuff that was inside of me that I had no idea. So I went, had the mammogram last Tuesday, right? And when I got out the car, I said, God, What's the purpose of this? Because I start noticing, you know, things that happen when I'm fighting stuff like, and it's like something that's supposed to take place. We need to ask ourselves, why am I fighting this? But you have to know that most of the time, the very thing that you're fighting is because there's some type of purpose to it and why it needs to take place in your life. So last Tuesday, I went to the mammogram to the fact that I'm sitting in there, right? I'm sitting in there 
and I'm like, this is stupid. I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not doing this. This just does not make any sense, right? I had no idea why I was tripping, why I was acting like that. So, and I'm, I'm being very transparent and authentic. I'm sitting in there and tears start coming down my eyes. I'm like, what the? I'm like, Ivor, what the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> Are you, are you seriously, you in here crying? Like, what's wrong with you? And so I have um, these uh, older women, you know, everybody pretty much looking at me like, um, what, what, you know, like, why am I in here? Another lady was like, you're getting a mammogram? Oh, you you know, you're, you're pretty young, aren't you? And so I'm like, yeah, you know, telling the whole story about this whole thing about the insurance. And so I'm sitting there. And I, te I text my friend, Martina, I'm like, girl, I need you to pray for me. I don't know what's going on. I'm in here tripping. Didn't know that the text was still circling around and never went through. And so I had to start encouraging myself. And I'm talking to God. I'm like, God, what is going on? Like, why? I mean, this is just a mammogram. Like, why am I tripping? So I go and I sign in, right? I go back to where I was sitting at. There is a big blue Bible sitting in the chair. Okay, now, I've been sitting right here before I left. Where did this Bible come from? There's this Bible sitting in the chair, and I heard 1 Corinthians 2, 3. And I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing where it speaks about how God is with us in our weakness and our time of trembling. And so, the God just, God just started ministering to me and let me know everything was going to be all right. But I'm sharing this because... I had no idea that I was afraid to take a mammogram. I had no idea that I had this fear of my mother passed a breast cancer. What? Thank you so much, Aaron. My mother passed a breast cancer. What if the same thing happens to me? I didn't know that I was afraid to take this mammogram and from what everybody else had, you know, the looking at my history, I didn't even know I was afraid of that. So I'm sharing this because of the fact that if I never went, if the this particular insurance company, because I went through so many different insurance companies and nobody has never told me to take a mammogram, that they needed to see my mammogram results first because of my mother's death. But had I not gone through it, and also I was fighting it, and when I started fighting it, that's when I was saying, wait a minute, is, is something going on? There is a purpose in this. I wouldn't have been able to confront the fear. So that day I confronted it and I said, oh no, I bind that up in the name of Jesus. Those thoughts are not within me. You know, my mother may have passed from breast cancer, but you know, that does not claim my life. And I had to just, you know, I was in there and like, oh my gosh, this is what's going on. This is why I'm up here. You know, I, I'm crying because I'm afraid because it's fear. And sometimes in our life, we don't even realize that we're running from a thing because we are afraid. Sometimes we may say, well, I'm not used to that. Um, I don't know what that's going to be like. So I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing because I don't understand it. That's fear. That is fear. And I thank God for that encounter. I got my results back. Praise God. Everything is good. My um, mammogram results came back normal. And so... Again, the thing is, if we do not confront the fear in our lives, we will keep running. We will continue to be in bondage. We will continue to be in a place where our best lives cannot happen that God has planned for our life. And so let me also share this. I was going to... um I was going to share this announcement like April the 30th, May 1st, right? And my cousin, um, Yolanda, I reached out to her just having her, you know, look at the project. And she was like, you know, I think you should do it around Mother's Day, like in dedication of your mother. Now, watch this now. This was before the, you know, I took the mammogram. She didn't even know how God was using her and how significant when she said, no, you should do it around Mother's Day. And that was because I had the fear, the fear of breast cancer, you know, the fear of what happened to my mom. What if it happens to me? And so that's the reason why I'm presenting this um, before Mother's Day and, you know, rest in peace to my mom. I miss her dearly, but I'm also rejoicing because I've overcome the fear of thinking and 
really thinking that my life was going to be my mom's life because I'm afraid. Of, I was afraid of breast cancer and afraid of what if I go for a mammogram and my results come out like how my mom. So that's the testimony I wanted to share as far as when I said that um, the fear that I had to confront just this last week. And so now I am going, well, amen, Javita. I'm, t I'm, I'm telling you, like, when I, when I look back over my life and, and, you know, a, a lot of us, true enough, I'm just going to be real. And a lot of people might not like this. A lot of things are, you know, God's timing and we wait on God. But can I be honest with you? A lot of God now came to you a lot of times. A lot of opportunities have came, but you didn't move on those opportunities because of fear. You didn't move on the very thing that God was trying to say, I need you to step away from this out of your comfort zone. I have something new for you because you were afraid because of the fact that you couldn't release your own will, your own plans for your life and, and trust God for the plans that God has. So yes, Yes, that that is true as far as a, a timing and God. But 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 let's be honest. And I had to look at myself, and I had to be honest with myself. Evora, there are so many opportunities that have passed you. You know, God wanted. I, when I sat back and I really saw the things that God was trying to get me to step into so me so many times ago. But I didn't move on it because I was afraid. I didn't move on it because I didn't believe in who God said I was. I didn't move on it because I believed what the world said and not the one who created me. Come on now. Come on, y'all. Come on. We, we, you have to understand that fear is holding so many of us hostage of being, walking into our true identity, our true identity in Christ. And don't you know that if you're not walking into that true identity, how is his glory going to shine over your life? How are you going to be the impact that you were created to be in, in purpose? I'm not saying you're supposed to have a, not necessarily saying a big old platform and doing videos, any, anything like that. Your purpose is your purpose and it's whatever God reveals to you. But you have to understand if you don't know your identity, how will you be able to accomplish your purpose? If you don't know who you are, if you do not know who you are, and there's so many of us that fear is keeping us, fear is keeping us from knowing who we are. And so that's the reason why I speak about fear, because I know the bondage that it had me in for so many years. And I even had to go back to the root, the root of where my fear started from. And see, a lot of people don't want to do that. You know why? Because we some we are too busy pointing out what's going on in somebody else's life that we don't even want to sit our own selves down and be confronted with the truth of what's really going on with us. We have to be accountable. We have to take accountability. Stop worrying about somebody else. Stop st staying on the phone talking to this person, that person, and you don't even know who you are. Turn the TV off for a while. Do Get to know you. Who are you? Do you even know? Who are you? Do you even know? I mean, y'all, I'm just like, when, when I really look over my life, when I really look over my life, and I look at how the enemy has, oh my gosh, has stolen so many of our our identity and the really reason why I say it's stolen because you are already who you were before the foundation of the of, of this world you know God already knew who you were before you was in your mother's womb so that's the reason why I say it was stolen because it's still there it's still available but who knows you or knows anything about a product more than the manufacturer you can't keep asking the world about their opinions of you the world cannot define you because it was God that designed you. So they can't define you and tell you who you are. They can't. Faith or fear. Which would you decide? There's one, e either one, one of them. It's only one that is the driving force of your life right now at this moment. It is one that has been the driving force of your life most of your life, it's either faith or fear. And so doing this video and as I 
go ahead and share the project, what I've been working on, I want you to really ask yourself, and I want you to be honest with yourself, and I want you to ask, what is the driving force of my life right now? Is it faith? Am I bold enough even though I don't understand? Am, am I afraid to trust God's will? Am, am I afraid to surrender? You have to be honest with yourself. If you're not honest with yourself, you're going to continue to live this lie and you're not going you um you you are going to you are going to continue to live a lie of not knowing who you are, of your identity. And I'm just going to be honest. It will hurt when you really see where you are versus the plan and the life that God has for you. Like God loves you. God truly wants to give you the best in life. Truly. But do you believe that? Fear got you not even wanting to believe that. The enemy got you believing a lot. That, that, that's a lot. That, that's not even true. Faith or fear, which is the driving force of your life? It can only be one. It can only be one. You can't operate in both. So it's either faith or it's fear. So, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let me see. Let me turn around, turn this around this way. Okay. So here is the announcement. Doing this right. So faith or fear. And faith, um, I don't know if some of you saw the post that I posted the other day, but faith is forever achieving. In the most high God. Because you have to understand. That surrendering your own plans. And your thoughts to God. Is going to take faith. It's going to take trusting God. And just like how I shared with you. When I was waiting for my mammogram. And the scripture first. Uh, Corinthians 2, 3, where the Lord said that I'm with you in weakness and trembling. You have to understand that fear will arise when God is saying, I need you to surrender. I need you to go this way because you don't understand. We all are have battled with the fear of the unknown because we don't know what's next. But it's going to take faith. It's going to take faith and trust in God. And you have to truly believe that with faith, you will forever achieve in the most high God. And that is the plans that God has for you. You're going to achieve in them. But you have to decide, are you going to take that step? Or are you going to continue to allow fear to be the driving force of your life? So, the website is www.possiblefaithlife.com yes possiblefaithlife.com why is it possiblefaithlife.com because you have to understand even though you may have be, been living a life of fear it is possible to live a life of faith so i'm just scrolling the um the first page but you guys can feel free to go but on there so this project is to empower people. Thank you, Brittany. This project is to empower people to move your life from a place of fear to faith. To move your life from a place of fear to faith. When you move your life from a place of fear and faith, you will truly walk into everything that God has called you um, called you to walk into. Everything that God has called you to be. You will truly discover and find your identity. You will find your identity. And speaking of identity, um, there is a blog the first blog on there is titled, Have You Been Diagnosed with SID? What's SID? What does that mean? You're going to have to go to possiblefaithlife.com. Possiblefaithlife.com. And read the blog. Feel free to um, leave comments. And also, I want to involve you guys too, like whatever experience you may have and um, something happened where you overcame fear, I want you to share that and if you feel comfortable, but I can even post it as um, you being an anonymous, but I want to share other people's stories and post it on the website as well so that we all can be empowered to help one another.
so we can all be empowered to help one another. And just like how God gave me this vision to release the help to, to help others, there's so, so much that God wants to show you and the vision that God has placed inside of you so that you're, so you can do and fulfill whatever your purpose is, whatever your purpose is. And remember, only God can let you know that because it is God who designed you. People try to define you, but how do they really know who you are if they didn't create you? So I'm going to try to, let me see. Oh, duh, let me turn this around. Okay, so this is the first page right here, and it has the, um, what I said, faith of forever achieving in the Most High God. And so there's also a page where I share and tell my story, and I also I share the root, the root of where um, my fear came from. So. You can go there and you can read it. And I hope that you all are inspired. And then here is the blog. And again, the blog is titled, Have You Been Diagnosed with SID? Have you been diagnosed with SID? And so if you'll go to www.possiblefaithlife.com. Um, my cousin actually uh, put the website down there and you can... Um, you can read the, the blog and just read the mission behind um, PossibleFaithLife.com, again, which is to empower others to move their lives from a place of fear to faith, from a place of fear to faith. And again, if we do not confront it, we're going to continue to stay in the circle. God has so many promises, has so many great plans, but if we don't confront the, the if we don't confront the fear, we're going to be like the children of Israel. Cuz cuz that's that's what fear is, the fear is doing. It's keeping you paralyzed, it's keeping you in bondage. It's keeping you in bondage from being and walking into your true identity, who God has called you to be. And so, be empowered, be encouraged, and be honest. Be honest with yourself. Be be honest. And not saying you have to be honest and go and tell the whole world what your issue is, but talk to God about it. Let God walk you through as far as what you need to do next. And don't dwell on it. Don't dwell on the past. You see it. You see what's going on. Now what's next? You move forward. That's what you do next. But you have to be accountable for what has taken place and move your life going forward and surrendering to God's will. So that is what I have to share. Again, I'm pretty excited about PossibleFaithLife.com. Um, again, I would love if you guys have any experiences, something to, uh, you know, help someone. And even, you know, as far as if you found yourself in a situation of fear and what you had to do to move forward. And where you realize, like, you know, I can't allow fear to be the driving force. I have to allow faith to be the driving force in my life because fear is only going to keep my life in insanity. I'm going to continue to go around, you know, in the circle. And so, oh, my gosh, like, I just really think about um, a, a lot of fear, like, as far as me and a lot of people won't admit but I'll admit, like, I was in so much bondage of worrying about what people would think. I was so afraid to move on opp uh, certain opportunities. I was afraid to do um, certain things. I remember when I wrote my first book, I reached out to my publisher. It was like a week before it's supposed to have been published. And I told her, I said, you know what? Um, I'm kind of thinking about maybe I shouldn't do this. Because I was worrying about other people's opinions. And this is what you have to understand. Whatever it is that you do, it ain't about whether it's everybody in the world like it. It is about you putting it out there for who, whoever it's supposed to be for. I mean, come on. It's like a billion people in the world. I'm not worrying about whether somebody likes or agree with the vision that God has given me. I've been through that. I've fought that. Like, oh, I want something. 
I want this person to like it. I want this person to like it. Like, oh my gosh, why people don't understand? But now, because I know my identity, I know who I am, and I know who he has created me to be, and I'm bold to walk in that, it doesn't matter if certain people don't like it. Because God gave the vision to me, and I know it's going to be impactful to whoever needs it. And that's where I'm doing my part and surrendering to God's will and saying, okay, you know what? I might not even know the whole, whole how it's going to play out. I don't even know how many... Or or who I was going to be in power. But I'm not looking at numbers or anything like that. I'm just wanting to be obedient. Wanting to be obedient and for God's will to prevail in my life. I have went through so much these last couple of years where people just thought that I was just flat out crazy for some of the moves that I have made. But I had to make moves in faith because if I didn't make moves in faith, how could I be doing a video or even talking to somebody about faith if I never walked through it? And one thing you got to realize that you are the product of the vision that God has placed inside of you. So don't. Don't be ashamed or like, wow, like I had to go through this. I had to go, go, go through this. I had to go through that. Jesus had to go through dying on the cross for our sins to be repented, for us to be able to have another life. So that's what I want you to think about when you, when you look at the fact that you do have a purpose, that God has a purpose for you, for your life and why it's important for you to step out, why it is important for you to step out and take the step of faith, of knowing your identity, of being who you were called to be. It's possible. If you have been in a place of fear and bondage all, all your life, whoever told you you have to stay there, it's a lie. It is possible to live a life of faith instead of fear. Faith, faith, whatever you got to do, if you got to start speaking that to yourself for you to start believing it, if you got to start separating yourself and closing your ear from opposite of what somebody else is saying versus what God is saying, you have to do what you have to do. Point blank period. You have to. And if anybody is watching this video and they've been questioning and saying to themselves, I don't even know why I'm saying this. What's up with my life? I look back and I see I was in the same place last year. I look back two or three years ago and I was in the same place. What is going on with my life? You need to be, you need to really be seeking God for some direction. And I hope that's your confirmation that obviously your way is not working. And even though you may be afraid to surrender, surrender is the only thing that's going to Get you out of that so that you can see that there's another way so that you can start to go that way. And again, you have to be honest with yourself. Now, you know, I was that person before. So, you know, I know how people faith. So, you know, I was that person before that was on Facebook and that didn't like my life was all great. My love life was all great. But guess what? I was really depressed and ready to, to take to step out of life. Yeah. So I, I know what it's like to be fake and faking the phone. But I decided. That I will no longer lie to myself. Because lying to myself was only hurting me. It was not helping me. So you have to make a decision. You're going to continue to lie to yourself? Come on. It's not getting you anywhere. But for the sake of time. Because I don't know what time it is. I said I wanted this to be maybe like 15 minutes. But um, I, I hope. I hope. Everyone who is watching that you were encouraged, that you were um, inspired. And if you believe that someone else can be inspired, please feel free to share, tag them in this video, what, whatever, what, whatever. Because so I, I can talk about this because I was there. And I used to fight when God was showing me, I need you to share your story. I need you to share your story and I need you to help others because I know how it's going to help them. I, I remember being so scared and I remember crying because I was like, God, I don't want to do that. Like, you want me to tell my business? Like, don't you know what they tell us in the house? Uh-uh, what stay in this, what happened in this house, stay in this house. And don't you tell this, don't you tell that? Mm. All them secrets and all that stuff. What is it really doing to us? What is it really doing to us? Think about it. Think about it. But be encouraged. Be encouraged again. Um, 
when you go and you read the blog, feel free to share it on Facebook. And again, um, have you been diagnosed with SID? And again, to find out what SID is, go to the website, read the blog, feel free to share it. And I just hope, my only hope is that so many are empowered to move their lives from a place of fear to faith, from fear to faith. All right. God bless. Um, determination plus confidence equals success. Be determined. Be determined to be all who God has created you to be. Be confident in that. Be confident when God speaks to you about who you are and success. To me, success is not about money. It's not about the biggest cars. You can have all that and not be fulfilled in life. But to me, success is purpose. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there is nothing like waking up every morning. And knowing the fulfilling fulfillment. Like I said, you can have all money, whatever. But there's so many people who are not fulfilled by those things. You find that when you discover your purpose. Have a great day on purpose. Be blessed.